Right, so where we left off, we were adding duotone color, both hard edge and soft edge to our flat color, and it makes it look a lot more dimensional. Often, especially with heavier lines, this is a good place to stop because to do anything more can be really to overdo it. And good resources for kind of seeing examples of this are found in the assignment. First, in this handout, we're right to this part of it, where we've used hard-edged and soft-edged with our black outline. So the next option we have is to go full spectrum. Though sometimes this works a little against our line work, right? Because it's kind of overstating something. Full spectrum means that you can use other colors within your local colors. So this yellow local color lemon doesn't just use lights and darks of yellow. It can start to use purples and greens. Oh, let me turn that back on. Okay. It can start to use purples and greens. <laughs> And so sometimes when you use full spectrum color, then the black outline becomes too heavy. It's a kind of a different vocabulary. It's like the real world, the full painting has, has a black outline around it. So then we might add color holds, which is when you change the color of your outline. And then even do special effects like highlights on top of your outline. And then in order to make it show up on different backgrounds besides white, you might need to add an offset border, which works really well for t-shirt designs, stickers. And then if you wanted to print professionally, you wanna be aware of how your colors, your digital coloring is going to separate into professional printing with CMY color separation. So there, these are all the kind of specialized things we'll do. If you look at these slides, you'll see a lot of other examples of how they're used professionally, besides just my demonstration on a lemon. And so it has a lot to do with your taste. And we have a whole other set of slides we'll look at for the next assignment about color separation. So here we see kind of classic comics using duotone, hard edge duotone. Here we see classic comics using soft edge duotone. More soft edge duotone but then adding to it full spectrum, adding pinks and purples into that skin local color. So that's the next step to try. But always good to save your work and to keep them all on different layers. So my sandwich, right? Think of layering, organizing your layers for digital coloring as a sandwich. My bottom layer is a blank white layer. It's the white bread. On top of that, I have my flat color. This is all underneath the top layer of bread. And then what I did is a soft edged duotone on my flat color. That's my next layer. On top of that, I have a hard edge duotone. On top of that, I have a soft edge duotone on the shadows. So it just darkens the shadows in a few places. And I might even adjust that as I'm building it. If I think that goes too dark, I can always take the opacity down. So you can see the hard and soft edge duotones there. Then I have the hard edge duotone highlights. And then I have the soft duotone highlights <laughs> using the, the burn tool, right? And then I have my old duotone highlights which I don't like and I'm not gonna use. So always kind of understanding where your colors come from. If I change my flats, it can look really crazy. So you wanna understand what you're using and why. So now I'm gonna add on full spectrum. And to do this, I'm actually gonna turn off my background color. I'm gonna turn off my outline and I'm gonna hold down option. And this is what I recommend you do when you do full spectrum. You take everything you've done so far, you hold down option and you say layer merge visible. 
Then I'm going to label this layer full spectrum color. This is where I really get to play around with painting and color theory. The first way to play with full spectrum that I like is to go to image adjustments. We already played with levels, right? And you can always play with levels. Now that everything's combined, I can shift everything darker, shift everything lighter. I can play with just the highlights. I can play with just the shadows. I can even limit them. If I thought the shadows got too dark, I can limit them. Or the highlights got too bright, I could limit them. So that's playing with levels. But to play with the full spectrum, I want to go right to hue saturation, to the big guns. And I want to start playing with the hue. Maybe find something a little bit different. And either saturate it up or down, brighten it or darken it. Maybe something like that. And then I can start erasing away. I'm going to do it in soft edge, but you can do it soft edged or hard edge. So I have this slightly warm version. I have, I'm doing it at a low opacity of about 34%. And what this does is this introduces a different spectrum of color into my local color. Everything's a little bit warmer. And so I'm erasing away where I want those original blues to come through, especially in the shadows. Just waiting for the computer to catch up with me. Now that's a pretty subtle way of doing full spectrum, but it can be effective. So notice how there are greens now mixed in with the blues. There are oranges mixed in with the greens. So that's with full spectrum, that's without. So I kind of erased it away, except for in those areas. And then I can always use hue saturation to make that even more different. Like let's say like this. Now I've got pinks and oranges in the greens of my talons, <laughs> you know? It's like you can really push it pretty far. And because I'm doing it as a demo, I might as well. Even have a little bit of green on the tips of the, the wings there. All right. So when you do full spectrum color like this, it can often feel like a little too much. Especially with the black outline, right? So I, I toned it down a little bit. So now let's play with just directly coloring. I can use my paintbrush. I'm going to make it nice and soft edged. Usually full spectrum goes around with soft edged coloring. And I can pick a color. Let's see what would help bridge the gaps. Maybe a nice bright turquoise. I'm going to use a pretty big brush. This kind of introduces us a little bit to some of what we'll be doing with digital painting. I'm going to take it at a about half opacity. And I'm just going to paint directly in. And I'm going to put it on the helmet because the helmet kind of reflects that color a little bit. I can steal some of the, the other colors from other parts and put it in. It's like spray painting. I 
again, this is all just to play with the coloring. And you can always augment with, with lights and darks. And I can maybe take the opacity down a little bit more. And full spectrum is a lot more just like painting. And you'll see it used mixed in with the other techniques. So what does the full spectrum technique look like on its own? Looks like that so far. That's added on top. If we add it just on top of the flats, it looks like that. With the shadows, with the highlights, that's where we, how we get where we are. Now, if you overdo it, you can always take its opacity down. I kind of like that. And you can use it to kind of soften transitions. And as you're overlapping these different spectrum colors, you might accidentally go outside the lines a little bit. I'll show you how we correct for that. All of this is part of digital coloring. That's why it's so nice to have that vector outline. So notice in a few places, my soft brush went outside of my vector lines. It happened there. It happened here. So how can I take care of that? Well, I can simply go to my flat color, this layer, right? Select the white space, the empty space rather, not the white space, with contiguous. Go to my combined full spectrum color layer, which goes outside of those shapes because it's just a brush, right? And then just hit delete and it will clean it all up. I can also use dodge and burn on it. Just all as one file. Almost like you're just correcting a photo. So if I want more brightness on this tip of the wing, on the beak, I can play with that. Okay, now the problem is I like it, but it, it seems too subtle and two-dimensional to go with the black line work. So now we're going to go to color hold. These are like olives on top of the sandwich. And I'm going to make a new blank layer on top of my line art. Or better yet, I'll just make a duplicate of my line art layer. But then I will right click it and rasterize it. And I'm going to label this color holds. This is when you replace your black lines with something else or you paint over the top of them. So an obvious place for a color hold is in the helmet. I was just painting with light, soft colors. So let's continue that, but let's do this now at 100%. Let me pick a light color and I'm gonna paint a highlight on the helmet, maybe right at the edge, right there, right there. I'm gonna overdo it because that's a good way to, sh to demonstrate. And you see those go on top 